as thousands of supporters of President Trump stormed the U.S. Capitol building, venting their anger at the victory of Joe Biden in the presidential election. They forced the evacuation and lockdown of Congress itself, where lawmakers were all set to approve the election result. Shortly before the clashes, President Trump had addressed his supporters near the White House, telling them that he would never accept defeat. Within the past hour, President-elect Biden called on Mr. Trump to tell his people to go home, and within minutes, that was indeed the message delivered from the White House. We'll be live on Capitol Hill shortly. First, we'll have this report by our North America editor, John Sobel. And as we can see, Hugh, outside the American Capitol Hill recently, things were starting to look a bit edgy. It's, oh, look at him go! Look at that nice right hook to the face of a protesting moron! And it's like Glastonbury Festival here without the acid and without the LSD and without the music. So it's just a bunch of people being rowdy and violent, doing what America does best. Being obnoxious and loud and violent. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. And we're going to cheer on our brave senators and congressmen and women. And we're probably not going to be cheering so much for some of them. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. I spoke to this cock with a mate who looks like a TIE fighter killer pilot. We're here to support, you know, if, if violence happens, like it happens, but we're not going to start it. You know, we're just like here to defend ourselves. Yeah. So I said that again. I'm a Mexican immigrant. I support Trump. Freedom is paid for with blood. And tyranny always masquerades itself as safety and security. And that's what we're fighting against right now. While Johnny Farner, the attempted intellectual, tried to make their evil sound intelligent, I stood outside Washington imagining what it would be like to throw a gig. Like Night of the Living Dead, the zombies of American pseudo-freedom soon found their way into Capitol Hill and marched in single file, very orderly might I add, for a revolutionary unit, through the hallway of Capitol Hill and soon got into fisty cups with men of law. Look at him go! What a champion! And I mean the cop, not the radical. Doesn't really matter at the moment, does it? You're all barking mad. Some woman was soon shot, but apparently it wasn't a bullet because she only needed CPR. She was rescued and saved by heroes of life. But some guy made it into the inner sanctum and put his hand up like a Nazi. Look at the nice desks. That's quality interior design. Then the guy who looks like a plate of vomit decided to turn on Caesar. This election were overturned by mere allegations from the losing side. Our democracy would enter a death spiral. We'd never see the whole nation accept an election again. Every four years would be a scramble for power at any cost. Once the dude who looked like a bowl of sick had decided to betray Trumpy, this dude, Pensy, went for a nice single file walk among the hostilities in a nice room of statues which hadn't been destroyed yet by BLM and Antifa twats. Then he said something really important and political and slightly tedious which you can read here now on screen. And if you can read because you went to school and got GCSEs, thank the English government. So now we move over to Biden, the new dude on the scene, and let's see the size of his dongles. I call on President Trump to go on national television now to fulfill his oath and defend the Constitution and demand an end to this siege. Including parkour experts and mountain climbers, everyone had a go at using the White House like some kind of scaling wall for their art exhibitionism and general shenanigans. Look at them all standing there. They're not even that violent at the moment, but they could be because lots of them have got guns because they're Americans and Americans fart guns because they love guns because they can't get women. What else have people been telling you? Thanks, Hugh. As you can see, I'm standing outside Capitol Hill, surrounded by loads of ghastly right-wing American turds. Yes, 
The IQ level here is palpably unacceptable. You can count the steaming shit coming from their moronic brains as they attempt to cajole the government into giving us more of the orange one. We don't need any more orange. We've all seen the tango adverts. You just get slapped or treated badly or manhandled. That's the way of the orange fascist. We must say no. We must give up. We must stop listening to these bellends who think they're cool quoting shit like the art of war and getting it wrong. This is not about war. This is about something else. This is about dicks. Dicks being dicks, as they always have been, and they always will be until Armageddon, I suppose. Which looks like it's just about to kick off around the corner, sooner or later. I thought Armageddon was going to be somewhere in Africa, but it looks like it's going to be in Washington and all over America pretty soon. Unless the new Jerusalem with Jesus flying at the helm comes back down from space and lands somewhere over Louisiana. It's going to be fantastic. Thank God to all those right-wing and left-wing Christians who really enjoy politics. They're the ones who cause the fuss the whole time. Whether you're extremist left or you're extremist right, you're both dicks. None of you have any rational comprehension of what it is to exist as a colossal cosmic mind in this universe of infinitesimal genius and the glory of the God which is lording himself around and making morons of all of us because we are morons. We are all morons. We are all knobs, as you can see by that man there, and that man there, and her over there. Dicks, the lot of you. And it's time we had them all vaporized by neutralizing agents sent from the Augustus Clinic of the Mentally Deranged. You may see this as some kind of insurrection, and I tell you it is exactly that. An insurrection sounds a bit like erection, although they're completely different. But I know which one I'd rather have for my country. At least for me. I don't want their erections, I want my erection. But not their insurrections. Their insurrections can go the way of my erection after I've orgasmed. But enough of my filthy tongue. Enough of my radical ideas over what makes the utopian society so great and evolved and wonderful and delicious. No, we are seeing the decay of one of the greatest empires in the modern world right before our handsome eyes. And it's time I said to the American people, we've put up with you dicks for long enough. You may be cool at places like Street Hawk and A Team and Knight Rider and Airwolf. Shit from the 80s that was really happening and taking us into the microchip future. But we've seen beyond. We've read the Bible and we haven't seen a good episode of Knight Rider in many years. So it's time you pulled off your Baywatch babes and put down your hardcore drugs which you inject into your arms using medicines and drugs and Glocks and semi-automatic AR-15s right in there. And we've had enough of your gun-toting pseudo-freedom. You're the most incarcerated people in the world. That's not free. Have you actually even read the Constitution? Can you read? I'm not so sure. If you read the Constitution, you'd be as fucked as I was for two years doing politics at boarding school. Jesus! At least American politics is vaguely exciting. Unlike British politics or Russian politics, which is more depressing than Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment. Fuck them and their law. And when we're after that, we'll... Uh, R.I.P. Keith Flint is all I can say. We always thought he was a demonic little hellion back in the day, but it looks like he was right. It looks like we are all imbeciles on drugs, being knobs. Over to you. Back to the studio here.